five for testing a uh, 2.3 megawatt wind turbine generator. So, this one here in the shop, what we'll do is we're going to move up close here and we're going to start setting up the all test uh, online unit. So, what we do first is turn it on. There we go. And as you can see, we have a couple of options here. Now the options across the top are exactly the same as the options in the Altest 33. The options down below you can see um, the first one. Uh, this is for testing AC machines. The second one is for testing DC machines. Manual is for doing independent tests. Uh, this one here is for doing the route. Uh, so if you have a uh, route set up, um, you can uh, enter that and it'll walk you through. And the last one is communications for the software. I can turn the unit off if necessary uh, by going here and hitting OK. So uh, the other difference in this unit uh, versus the Altest 4 is you can see I have an alphanumeric keypad that's going to allow me uh, to enter in data far easier. So let's turn the unit on. First thing we're going to do is hit this testing here. Now this is the Altest 4 tests plus the Altest 33 tests. So if I click on OK, it says motor or transformer. Now this machine is designed to test motors and transformers, uh, as well as DC machines of all types. So we're going to select motor, and it says collect, connect the blue clip to phase two and the yellow to any frame ground. So I'm going to take the blue clip, connect to phase two, and I'm going to connect to Now, good news is part of this will also check to make sure I do have a good connection. I press OK. I'm going to ask if I want to do dissipation factor and capacitance to ground test. Now, dissipation factor and capacitance to ground test I'll have covered in another presentation. Uh, so I select yes by moving the cursor over. So yes and click OK and allow it to run those tests for me. It'll display the dissipation factor and the capacitance of this circuit. Press OK to continue. And that'll ask if I want to do an insulation and ground test. Press yes. Press OK. And then I hold down the test button and allow it to come up to at least a gig ohm. Now I'm doing this as a 500 volt. This is a 690 volt machine. So I press OK. And now it says connect the other, other leads. So I connect the other leads to the machine. down backwards <laughs> and press OK to continue and allow it to run all of the static tests that were actually in the all test four. I don't have to move leads now, I don't have to pr uh, press anything, I just let it run the tests. With a larger machine like this, it takes a little bit longer to run each test. Smaller machines are usually a little quicker. But now, I have all my test results. The first thing I can do is save and or save this to a reference. So, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So, the first thing I want to do is save this. So I save it. I can quick save, 
save or save as reference. So I'm going to save this as a reference because uh, Rice Looker does a lot of these. So I press OK and we're going to call this EEM. So, oh, made a mistake there. So D, E, M. And then we're going to change this so it uh, gives the alphabet. So, OK. So now it says 1, 2, 3 on the top. D, E, M, 1. Press OK. And then next, the location. Okay, we'll say this is uh, whoop. I want to call it large motors or LG M uh, da, 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 T R S. Okay. Next. Motor ID, I can put in the job number or whatever else I want. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, um, oh. Let's go back to previous. Okay. Okay, I'm going to call this one, two, three. Okay. Move up to next. Um, skip this. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip through the rest because I can take care of this uh, on the computer as well. So I press OK. Now I know it's a Delta. It's European design. Um, hopefully it should be perfect because uh, this is a newly wound motor. Saved and OK. So. Now this is a um, this is an induction generator, so I'm expecting to see some unbalances in here. I'm also using jumpers, so I'm going to be careful when I see my resistance readings. Now it is a four-wire Kelvin unit, so all I have to do is highlight each test I want to look at and hit OK. So 2.9, 2.9, 2.8. That's pretty good. Press OK again. I can come down here and it says use reference for these. There's really um, this TVS data, which I will also have described uh, in another video. So let's go ahead and back. Contamination, it says it's okay, meaning there's no contamination. This allows me to look at the dissipation factor and capacitance tests. Let's close in a little bit. So on the unit itself, uh, in addition to the equipment, giving me um, test results, it's going to tell me OK, caution, or bad. So if I come down here to insulation resistance, it's telling me it's greater than a gig ohm at 500 volts. Um, the phase angle here, which is something that was done on the all test uh, 4, but as you can see it goes out to another digit. I'm still looking for plus or minus 1. Uh, from the average here, but this is nice and balanced, 85.3, 85.4, uh, 85.4, which is very good. I press OK, and now I go to that IF test, and I check that, minus 47.3, 47.5, 47.4, well within the plus or minus 1 range. Press OK again, go back, and I can look at the impedance. Now this I'm expecting to be somewhat unbalanced because I have a, oh, no, 605, 606, 605. And then uh, the inductance is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. That's all good. And last but not least is the test frequency that it used, which it selected 400 hertz. I don't have to select that test. So as uh, I go on, that is now finished. I can come down here and exit or upload the test. However, seeing as I I'm done with testing this, or if I want to go on to the other one, I can select that or I can just go right and left, which will reset the unit back to the beginning, and I can move on to the next uh, machine that I'm testing. And that's it. That's how easy it is.